Hello and welcome to another episode of MCCM's Mates Rates. Today we have two local boys done good, the owners and founders of Salford Rum, Tommy and James. Welcome boys, you okay? Yeah, thanks so, for having us. No worries mate, no worries. Thank you for the uh, the little tipple as well. Let's get that. Probs. Yeah, <laughs> good stuff. Appreciate it. Cheers boys. Cheers. Cheers. So... We, we get right into it here, we crack on straight away. Effectively, what we do is we talk about your business journey. So, tell us the story from start to finish and then rate your experiences along the way. So, tell us about how Salford Rum came about. So, so me and Tommy have been, as you know, I've been mates since St. Mary's year nine. Yeah. We both had the same JJB Lecoq Sportif Court. <laughs> and, and back when it was like goalposts for like jumpers for goalposts, yeah. like we would pick up. The, the, the other person's caught pretty much every break and like you'd only know when you got like his clipper card don't you remember the old clipper cards <laughs> or the, showing our age a bit now yeah, yeah. and um since then we were kind of best mates went yeah. to college together uh, uni uh yeah even request the same like the dorms next to each other at yeah. Leeds University and then kind of when we when we finished uni got our degrees you kind of like everyone does you start to settle down and and get jobs and start your careers and you kind of you kind of drift not drift away but it's harder to see your, your mates and like we'd see each other at kind of Christmas Easter the bit the big events and we kind of we always wanted to do something together have a, have a like a, an interest or, or a hobby that would make us kind of be able to spend a little bit of time together so we tried golf and that was hard and <laughs> exp- exp- <laughs> expensive so and then Tommy, uh, Tommy came up with a business idea. What year was your first business idea? Oh. Can I tell this story? Uh, yeah, why not? Fuck it. Uh, <laughs> Twenty seventeen election, wasn't it? Do you beat? Do you beat the? the f- Listen, bro, 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 bro. <laughs> <laughs> it's for adults. Twenty seventeen. Tommy it came. It is up. an embarrassing one. This, so I'll just like <laughs> yeah, to I, I didn't. I didn't have much to do with this. <laughs> Tommy came. What it was like the election time? It was um, Theresa May versus Jeremy Corbyn. And Tommy came up with like election election mayo, it's called. Yeah. And we had Jeremy or Corbyn and Theresa Mayo. <laughs> Jazz of Mayo. Jazz of And yeah. um, red, red and blue. And uh, so, Tommy designed it all because his, his job is kind of M- MPD and it was like sports nutrition. And so he knew everything about, about th- these kind of products. And we went to just local markets, didn't we? Just, yeah. just selling. Tommy and we had this kind of. So it, it spread on it, <laughs> <laughs> and it was like, yeah, predicting the the election with uh, sales of mayonnaise. So you so. you were kind of ahead of the curve on the uh, Liz Trust lettuce. <laughs> yeah, so yeah. Didn't go as bad. Branded, as branded as edibles. Bad. I like it. I love it. <laughs> so it turns out when you don't sell any mayonnaise jars, you can't predict the outcome of the election. <laughs> yeah. um, but we, Tommy did that, and you know, we just enjoyed the process, and it was kind of 2018, I, I yeah. think, and we were your house for for christmas and we were always just lager beer drinkers and then finished the night on a on a rum and we you know that we were sat there with our our girlfriends at the time that no wives and we we they had this choice of all these fantastic local gins and you know manchester gin didsbury gin liverpool gin all, all these types and we for rum just had the kind of supermarket staples so we kind of, you know, casualty Christmas specials on the telly and like we're whispering to each other, you know, I wonder if we could come up with our own local rum. I mean, how, how hard can it be? All these gym brands. And and so we kind of, kind of our flag in the sand, our, our big moment. We got like the, we were like, <coughs> girls, we've got, we've got an announcement. <laughs> and uh, we were like, we're, we're going to set up our own local rum company inspired by them then them gins and they just kind of went all right and just like turned back to casualty christmas special <laughs> i just thought it's another her brain idea and then you bought a, a book off amazon that day yeah, it was like, it? yeah just history of rum and it basically went from there so when we first thought the idea we was like surely it's got loads of legislation around it like scotch whiskey would have you know you can't do it but pretty much turns out it wasn't and at the time there was no like local rum brands in the same way you'd get all the gin. So we just went for it, didn't we? And we like reading into the history of rum, we saw all the, the stories of the imports. So obviously rum, Caribbean's famed for rum. It was all made there. It was imported into uh, into the UK. And obviously I was, I've been living in Salford then by, for like 10 years and the dockyard there. So we started looking at the records and 
the idea was born, the Salford Rum Company. And yeah, we oh. went from there. It's a, it, to be fair, it's a, a good start-up story, isn't it? I mean, th- these these things do happen over a beer or two sometimes, and as it turns out, you've made a business out of the, the drink drunken you, idea. Yeah, <laughs> of the drunken idea, which is, is always decent. So, I mean, Salford in itself is, is synonymous with, like you said, um, the boat trade. Um, my dad from Stretford and worked in on the Keys and Round Trafford Park and stuff like that, and he's got stories about stuff coming in and out. Obviously, not from like way back when, but yeah. uh, like forties and fifties, that was still happening. Um, so, from your research, how did it go from research to actual development? Yeah, well, we we, we did all this research, and we had, you know, we knew there was, we knew we could create a, a brand with validity. You know, there was real history behind. Mm what we were thinking about. We were seeing the shipping logs. We were seeing the, seeing the spices and the rums that were coming in and we were going, right, we can we could base our recipe on on this. And the one thing that good that came out of Tommy's kind of mayonnaise business, um, not the not the, just the everlasting uh, <laughs> amounts of uh, mayonnaise that we've got now, but we were on a stall near a, a lad called Dave Draws, an artist called Dave Draws. And um, I think that day at Disbury Market, we might have lost money because Tommy bought this print, this kind of Salford print um, for his front room. And it was like the, the maps, um, which you can kind of see on the on the bottle there today. And we were, we kind of, we'd done the research. We knew what our flavours wanted to be. We knew the, the history. We, we kind of didn't know what, what it wanted to look like, but Tommy had this print in his front room and we were like, I wonder if we got a ceramic bottle, something that was of the age that was representative of all these like inspirations and a, and a cork and wooden stopper. And then we were like, I wonder if we put something like that doodle map on it. So Tommy like took a picture, we printed it off and we just wrapped it around a bottle and kind of the, the sulfur rum company was, was born. We had a, we had a design. We went on Google and paid like a fiver for a logo, didn't we? Yeah. Um, very much like the white company's logo, <laughs> but you know, <laughs> but inspired, inspired, inspired by, by the, yeah. the, um, and we kind of had we had all of them bits in place, but we didn't know how to how to make rum. And Tommy, I don't know if you want to tell this bit. Of well, yeah. So basically, as James mentioned, like we had we had the great idea, great brand, great story, but didn't know how to make the rum. And um, we got in touch with well through a few conversations that we had. Uh, obviously, distilling chemistry process. We got in touch with Manchester Met University, and three of the professors. Uh, they uh, they had the, all the equipment and they had a, a little small batch distillery that were, they, they were operating out of, but more for the, the, the students, really, yeah. and the chemistry side of stuff. So uh, we started working with them and, yeah, told them what we wanted to put in it, developed the recipe. My background's like food and drink, nutri- um, product development, but more on like the sports and nutrition side. Okay. Like cut my teeth at my protein and a couple of brands since CMP and that. So... Uh, yeah, we had like the, kind of the background, but not enough knowledge to get us over the line. Uh, but yeah, we worked with them guys. It took us like five, six months to perfect the recipe with them. And then we ordered our first 200 bottles. Wow. But it was eight eight grand, like four grand each we put in didn't we, to yeah. get from zero to, yeah. to launching the, the, the business. So After you'd found your very own Walter White. Just to you, do yeah, it's very much a Breaking Bad yeah. type, type yeah. story. Yeah. The setup did look very breaking bad, didn't it? Yeah, <laughs> under, it did. under a railway arch in in uh, in near Piccadilly Station in yeah. Manchester. So yeah, and then we took him to Great Northern Makers Market, so just on the front there by um, Great Northern, um, and um, yeah, we sold. Uh, we basically loaded my car with as much stock as we could take, and we sold a lot. And it was like shit. We're actually onto something here. Yeah, uh, you yeah. know, I think until then we thought we'd just be taking stock to makers markets, bit of cash in hand, uh, and that was when we thought, oh, actually, we've got a proper business here. So, yeah, yeah. That, that so, I mean, in terms of a startup story, that is as as good as we've had on the show. Yeah. Um, so, I mean, what we we tend to do is we ask you now to rate that startup journey. So, <laughs> it sounds like a pretty slick process i'm sure it's a lot harder than you've made it out it definitely is so on, on a scale of one to ten how would you rate that startup journey i think from going to a concept idea at christmas to kind of having that product to, in august i think we we're more luck, lucky than than, than skill like the, the stars aligned tommy lived in salford five minutes away it was this great history yeah, and yeah. story that could inspire the brand we stumbled on the professors that could make, make us, us rum. And although it was stressful going through the 
the kind of the regulation bit, getting all the the licenses. So my by my background is risk management. So Tommy does all the exciting stuff with <laughs> uh, product development and distilling and, and stuff like that now, and I do that kind of rules and regulations. And but I, I would say I enjoyed it. Do you know, it, it, yeah. it gave us what we wanted that time together to do something interesting, exciting yeah. that wasn't your your full time job. And because we'd never, we wasn't setting it up necessarily to you know make a business that would you know uh, provide for us. Just felt like fun, and you know yeah, something yeah. to do on a weekend and an evening. So. That's yeah. wicked. In that sense, I'd rate it pretty highly. So. Oh, that's good stuff. And it and it, only an eight month process from kind of start yeah. to launch. Yeah, yeah. It's yeah. weird because you know working in like startups as I have it, it, it always is zero budget and yeah. you know make it make it happen as quickly as possible. I love uh, it. And uh, yeah, so that was kind of took a lot of learnings from yeah like and ten years of doing that. You've right? created a demand, and I think that what you guys do and coming from the background that I come from, that the marketing that you put into it, it is brilliant, really good. Yeah. And I think that the, the Dave Draws element of the bottle, it, it makes the bottle a collectible item. Yeah. It's something that you guys have marketed really well and you've, you've, you've really kind of grasped that concept of creating a demand for something. So you've gone from zero to start up, yeah. then things start to escalate. Tell us a little bit about the challenges that you faced once you started thinking, shit, this is actually a proper business now. Yeah, it's, it, it's, it's hard because it, it's hard to pinpoint like one challenge because you, you kind of, we, we've moved through the last few years like, it, and the, the years blur into each other, don't they, in terms of, you know, the one that springs to mind was kind of, Covid, when yeah. you know everything started to to shut down, all all the bars, um, and restaurants, and you know we we kind of thought our business was finished. But you know the one good thing we'd done, we'd sort of set up a D to C website, which not many alcohol brands do. So like you, you don't go on to you know some of the some of the big brands' websites and buy, buy a, a bottle. Mm-hmm. You know, not many people like the the operational hassle it causes by setting up websites and having to maintain that and send stuff out to customers. So we had done that, and what what was going to be what we thought was going to be a business ending challenge, actually, we grew five times in 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 COVID. Like we we, we you know, um, because people were just flooding into it. No one had, no one had anything to do, so we just flooding into the the website and, and buying. Uh, buying bottles but we both still worked throughout the kind of first three years of the three four years really of, of Salford Rum we both worked full-time so you know we had a pretty pretty big business and you know selling in some major retailers but we would work nine to five and you know I, I'm still working today so I've worked today and then, then come here Tommy's managed to go full-time in just the last six six seven yeah. six seven months but I would say the balancing act, it, yeah, actually when I think about that question, if I'm going to think of one one constant, I don't know if you agree with me, but it's been that balancing act between where getting delivering what you need to do on your day job because that's what yeah. pays, pays the mortgage, pays the bills, and you don't want to let anyone down there. But also trying to grow this business and this passion yeah. after work and then have the age we're at. You know, we've had kids in that that period and that just makes it a whole lot more complicated yeah, yeah. And, got, and got married and... Uh, do you know, it's I would say that that kind of balancing act between work and passion and family is you know it, it's real hard when you've got your own business yeah. and all these other things to juggle. Yeah, I'd just reiterate that really. Yeah, COVID was pretty crazy, and we we managed to get through it, though, didn't we? And then <clears throat> over the like kind of twelve months after that, we started to plateau. So it was kind of like, well, we either have to go for it now, and or we knock it on the head yeah. because we've. Like James said, I'm just both so busy with families and work. So I took the jump in like October full time. And yeah, we, we managed to kick on again though now. So yeah, like, yeah whether we can I feel like we're, we're, we're probably one of the bigger craft run brands now. But whether we can take that step up to the next level and start taking on some of the big boys. Yeah. I, guess. Well, I must admit like from for any brand to survive outside of COVID, um, especially one that was in its relative infancy and then you're still pushing it but like you've said like going back to what i was saying before the marketing aspect of what you've done you were savvy enough to be able to create that demand and an outlet that you could still make money from um 
And yeah, in terms of what you just said, one of the, the bigger craft brands is you like you get where water doesn't. I can go in bars and stuff <laughs> in Manchester or a supermarket and see it like, oh yeah, I know those boys. Yeah, yeah. It's funny though because because of how the industry works, you like with wholesalers and then they sell to all the bars. So you'll go in somewhere and you don't even you don't even know, you don't even know it's yet. there. Like, yeah. Oh man, so yeah, it's good. And then you try and f- try and tell them you own it and see if you can yeah. get free. Yeah, <laughs> usually works. To be fair, I, I guess I guess like that. The, the equivalent for someone like myself is if I, if I design something for a client and then I see that design on a shelf, like what, yeah. what was that like seeing your, your brand oh, out there? Oh, it was crazy. The, the yeah. first, we went into, so we'd done like the markets right at the start. We'd had success. We thought, you know, we'll keep going back to these markets. You could get a beer here. You know, worst case, you know, we'll sell, sell a few. And if we only ever sell these 200, get our money back, that that's fine. I like Tommy, Tommy saying before we... We, we had to put our second batch order in of another couple of hundred literally next week and and within kind of six to eight weeks we we had a message on twitter from selfridges saying look see, seeing your brand at you know one of, one of the markets and would you come into the traffic center store and uh, and just have a chat to us so we you know we went in and similar to what you're saying we've never seen a bottle like this it's it's you know, it's not a hula girl or a mythical sea creature yeah, yeah. it's something a little bit different no, we want we want to stock you, and then it's it's a copycat industry then, and then you've got the likes of John John Lewis and and other department stores wanting to stock you, and I think within like kind of six months of was launching the, the brand and sitting on that market, we we're in kind of the three major department stores in uh, in, in Britain, you know, and. It, it was pretty crazy. We used to go out to Trap Centre Selfridges, didn't we? <laughs> I just watched people looking at <laughs> we, we would sit in that food court yeah. bit and we would just watch people and like people would just wander over to near where we were and we were like, please pick it up, please pick, please pick it up. And then we'd go like, just go over Tommy and like, you know, tell them what it is. And, <laughs> <laughs> and yeah, it was, it was pretty, like we were, we were really proud we, of yeah. the, what, what, what we'd managed to do, but also yeah, a little bit surreal seeing knowing that people wanted something yeah. that, that, that you'd created. We were, um, we were on my stag doing Tenerife, like negotiating terms with Selfridges on email. <laughs> wow. <laughs> from our yeah, yeah. room, weren't we? Yeah, it was pretty, uh, pre- pretty full on at the time, but yeah. It was, it's, it's brilliant. And I think that what you've done with the brand in itself, and I know I'm going on about brand a lot there, but it's kind of like, that's my jam. It's what I do. Yeah. I love it. And the fact that you've created all these different flavours and they're almost like each one, I at the risk of dumbing you guys down and please don't take this the wrong way you've created almost like a prime-esque type of want but yeah. with grown-ups do you know what i mean so every kid wants the different colored prime bottles yeah and i'm waiting yeah. for you to like release the next flavor yeah. of sulfur rum yeah. so i can go out and collect all the bottles it's We've, pretty mental isn't yeah. it on launch nights and we, we we've discussed just like doing loads haven't we but we, we've kind of got a rule that it's, it's got it's got to be able to tie into <laughs> the story and the docks and the history yeah. so yeah the, the launch nights are mental aren't they like we we both get together every launch night at the distillery and then like set it all up websites ready to go socials ready to go and we just hit the button don't we and then you, you're just like watching shopify like the seeing the numbers of visitors to the website and stuff there can be it's, two it's two three hundred people waiting on the website yeah. like 15 minutes before for, for us to release our our product, which is that, must give you a proper buzz. Though, just yeah. to yeah. know that that yes. demand is there. The best feeling, and like, because I I love selling to retailers and, and that, but selling direct to consumers, especially like on the markets where you get to chat to them and tell them the story, and uh, that that's the best the best feeling. Really. Like yeah. Tommy said, I think all our, our flavors are relatable because you know, the rum and black that we've we've got here when we were when we first started off, we were literally delivering. So we didn't have a website. Tommy built our website from scratch. Uh, with no, we so can't. Not, not, but yeah, but you had no IT <laughs> with background. A, with a free theme. Yeah. <laughs> and um, we, we had, like, people would just message us on, we had a Facebook page, and people would message us and say, how do we get hold of hold of your room? And we'd be like, just send 40 quid to these bank details. And we'll come after work in, like, Tommy's Seattle Tech at the time, <laughs> and uh, we'll just come and drop it at your door somewhere between, like, seven and nine. It was really, do- like, sounded really dodgy, but we'll turn up at your address. And um, it had to be after work because we work full-time, and we'd just spin to these people's houses, and we'd, we'd come out and we'd go to our wives, oh, we'll only be kind of 20 minutes. It's, it's three orders tonight. And the first one, I go, oh, come on in, lads. And they go, oh, we, we bought it because, you know, my dad worked on the on the docks and we would drink rum and black 
in the pubs and we, we didn't have a clue what Roman Black was and a few people mentioned it and it just stay, them type of things stare with you and then yeah, when it yeah. comes when we find a then find a farm in Worsley four years later that does blackberries and we think oh let's bring back rum and rum and black uh, and it's kind of I think if you if you keep that validity of, of and you know what you want to do and you're not doing crazy crazy flavors that you know i've not seen a mango tree in salford so we probably <laughs> won't go down kind of, uh, the mango or pineapple route but i, I think it's people it, things that people can relate to and then it creates that demand yeah and i think you, you you hit the nail on the head there you've definitely created a relatable brand um i mean we've had conversations with the guys from booth's town gin as well yeah. um and obviously they've created something similar but as you say the gin market is just so saturated it's difficult to make any dint but what you guys have done i mean up until literally you poured me that glass the honey one was my favorite <laughs> I, think, I think i might have changed my mind a little bit now on that well we'll leave you that one <laughs> <laughs> it wasn't that wasn't it, it wasn't it but um just going on to kind of the final part of the interview in terms of obviously what this has afforded you to do. I mean, you've already alluded to the fact that, Tommy, you've been able to go kind of full-time on this now. Yeah. Um, and also the fact that the distillery is not just a distillery, it's it's now a venue. Uh, and you've got, uh, you know, other other avenues that have kind of lent themselves to the brand. Tell us a little bit about that kind of, not post-success, because I wish you successes for many years to come, but where where is it going now? And what's happened since that big first deal? Yeah, it's funny because obviously like people see you're in Salford years, they see you're in John Lewis and they think, wow, you've made it. But reality is the volumes aren't, you know, they're not huge. Yeah. It's not going to change anyone's lives. So we're still just in that in that phase where we're trying to re scale the business and as I said before, get it, get it to the next level. So we've got what we think is a solid plan in place now to kind of deliver that over the next few years. And then who knows from there, to be honest. Like we've discussed other other drinks haven't we other brands and and stuff again like just with that with that tie in um but opening the distillery was a big a, a big yeah, kind of milestone like because you know we about. want we wanted to we'd, we'd got the skills to, to distill ourselves from back when we, we worked with the professors and we, we know we we knew we could do everything in-house and we always wanted to open it up to the to public so people could come along and see that we do things properly we do things with love and, and care and and that's why you get such a a good product and you know we we got the keys one november didn't we and then we were desperate to open something so we opened like a christmas theme bar like within like three weeks we opened bar rumbug uh and then <laughs> yeah, like it was it. shocking it was very cheesy it was yeah. like christmas wrapping paper on the all walls, over the walls graffiti like yeah was it, a fire hazard yeah. we were later got told by but, the yeah. uh, inspector uh but like <laughs> the, we we opened that we must have we just plowed a decent amount of money into trying to open it, thinking, oh, we'll open something for Christmas. Everyone's out at Christmas, they'll come. And then it was the Omnicron variant, wasn't it? Yeah. Like, literally a week after we opened, sure. and, and then we shut we shut <laughs> down. Um, and, you know, we lost a, a substantial chunk of, mo chunk of money, though. It was all really doable, but we, like, it taught us a few lessons to the, don't get too excited, yeah. think, <laughs> think things through. And so we closed down for another couple of months. What, what, what's your job? Uh, risk management, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Operational risk management, not financial risk management. Just, just uh, double checking. <laughs> and um, yeah, it, we, we kind of shut for a couple of months then, redid it back up and the distillery, opened it up for the, for the tours, brought all production back in in-house in and, and kind of the tours have been you know, really quite su yep. successful, haven't they? Great. Yeah, we've got like 80 to 100 people a week now coming into wow. the distillery. You get couple of cocktails or i'm doing the sales pitch here yeah. <laughs> cocktails are all the all the neat serves of all the rums we tell you about like the history of salford rum the docks and the likes and then they're in town then so everyone just heads out for a few right. more beers we, we get better public speakers from as you can see from this <laughs> than, 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 than me and tommy to uh you're holding to your own boys you're doing good you're doing good so i guess um what what is next for you boys then so i think there's a few more a few more rum uh, variants to do yet like we've got a couple in the plan for later this year which we hope we can land um but then yeah it's just for, for us we've got a good good presence in manchester now in terms of like the bars and the on trade it's can we can we scale beyond that just start doing a little bit of export so if you're in toronto ever you can pick up a bottle of salt <laughs> yeah. now. same in hong kong um, and we just got into duty free but yeah we just think 
we feel like in some ways we're on scratching the surface and you know if we can really kick on and we, we want Salford Rum to be you know the next big spice rum brand and UK's biggest spice rum brand and yeah that's the that's a dream so we'll keep pl- plugging away at it. Tom is right I mean if if two lads working full time over four years can take it to where it is now do you know we we have a, we, we think we have only scratched the surface and we've not Tommy Tommy there full time now and we're building a team a, a, around Tommy and hopefully you know, maybe try and get some investment go, going forward to you know get efficiencies around the, the cost of goods and you know hopefully hit a price point where we can get into some of these la- larger retailers you know because it's very hard for craft businesses like yeah. us to meet the the on the margin demands and, and the price point for huge retailers that you know you go in and do your weekly shopping and it's about how do we yeah, how do we thoughtfully get to that point without um, losing our houses and <laughs> getting in masses of, <laughs> masses of debt? Yeah. Oh, mate, well, I, I've, from talking to you and hearing the story and obviously knowing a bit about you boys, I've got absolutely no doubt in my mind that, like you say, this is just scratching the surface and uh, I wish you all the very best of luck. If you haven't checked them out, get yourselves on to the Salford Room social media or check out their website, just Google them, and you'll see these two handsome boys doing what they do best. Thank you very much for coming on, boys. Thanks for having us. Thanks, guys. That was brilliant, that.